Our next uh, talk is from Professor uh, Hong Liang Yi from the State Key Lab of Rolling and Automation at Northeastern University, and he will be telling us about low density steel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Usually, we should say Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today, I'm talking about a topic for the low density steel. Low density steel is a currently very hot topic for automotive steel, usually for the car body, for the reduce the, the weight of the whole car body and uh, get the high combination of uh, strength and ductility. But uh, here I will talk about the other issue for the low density steel, for the bearings. Bearing is very important structure uh, component in the all of kind of the machine or even automotive or aerial space. So, uh, even I'm thinking about the bearing steel. So, what is the the requirements for the steels for the bearings? First, the rolling contact fatigue property and also wear resistance. How can we improve both of the rolling contacting? fatigue property and the wear resistance is increase the hardness. So we have to guarantee the very high hardness in the bearings. So usually, how can we get the very high hardness in the steels? That means the interstitial solid solution hardening for metal site. That is the most uh, efficient way and also very, uh, very cheap. You know, carbon is really cheap if we compare it with the other kind of uh, hardening method, for example, uh, precipitation by, for example, the marine steel, like that thing. So carbon is really happy for our, for, for our this kind of steels. And uh, also disper dispersion hardening by carbon precipitation sometimes is also improve the hardness in the bearing steel in this case. Uh, so in order to improve the hardness, we need to the higher carbon concentration there for the <coughs> interstitial uh, so solution hardening. But the, the large con carbon concentration have these disadvantages for the increase for increase the hardness. First, the, the carbon will depress the MS temperature. What's that mean? That means we need mutton side to get the very high hardness. If we get very high carbon in the, inside the steel, in that case, we decrease the MS temperature. In that, in, in that means we can get only partial of the phase transform, transformation into mutton side. So much, uh, much, uh, many of the retained outstanding will, will survive if we get very high carbon. In that case, the hardness cannot achieve very high what we desired. And uh, the increasing of the retained outstanding fraction will uh, destroy the, the, the shape, shape, I mean, shape increase, uh, accuracy, because the retained outlet will get uh, transformed into mutton site if we get some during the serving processing of the, the bearing steel. So, and uh, yeah, in this case, we cannot do like this. Just uh, just be just, just just increase the carbon content to improve our hardness of the bearing steel. So this is the typical bearing steel. It already survived for almost more than 100 years. Like this chemical composition, almost they get uh, uh, almost just one weight percent of the carbon. So just like this, how can we improve the carbon? If, if we want, we, we want to increase the carbon to increase the hardness. Is it possible to higher carbon in the, in, in, in the bearing steels? If we design the alloy system like this, just based on the conventional bearing steel <laughs> like this, just add more carbon and uh, if we combine with addition of some high aluminum, you know, the aluminum can decrease the MS temperature. For, for example, for one person, weight percent of aluminum can decrease the MS temperature almost three, 
30 centigrade per second. And uh, in this case, we, we, if we add, for example, 4 or 5, 5 percent, we, with percent of alumini in this case, we, we can increase the MS temperature almost, uh, that, that means 150 centigrade. In this case, we can increase the carbon for 0 0.3, comparing with a conventional bearing steel. We, we, that means we, we can get the same written oxide fraction if we add, 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 add many alumini in, in this annual system. So this is the basic idea for the, for the new alloy system we call the low density bearing steel. Yeah. Aluminium can decrease the density of the steel because aluminium is a very light. It's just uh, one third of the density comparing with the steels. What's the, the other advantages if we consider adding uh, add the aluminium in the lower bearing steels? Aluminium condition we increase the MS temperature, so we can increase the carbon contagion and uh, suppressing return oxygen fraction. And uh, the other very, very interest, interesting issue is the aluminum can actually move the uric toward the carbon content to the right. That means in the conventional bearing steel, because uh, in, 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 if you are considering the just the plain carbon steel, the uric toward carbon content should, should be around the 0.8%. But in the typical bearing steel, because of the iron addition, for example, manganese and chromium or, or something, in that case, the, 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 you, you take to it, the carbon content actually gets depressed to or, 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 or around 0.5%. In that case, that means during the cooling during the phase transformation, many of the carbon will precipitate before the trans the take toward transformation. That means we will get serious networks of the cementite in the original microstructure at the just as as road or as as machine <coughs> materials. That will deteriorate the uniform distribution of the ionic elements in the bearings. So if we add the aluminum inside the bearing steel, it will move the effect of carbon content to the right. That may increase the carbon concentration for the uric to the reaction. In this case, we can get very high carbon in the aluminum added bearing steel. That, that will avoid the network's carbon form formation before the uric to the transformation. And also, lowering the density. Uh, maybe for the conventional structure, uh, the, the, the machining or something, we do not focus on the density of the bearings. The performance is the most important issue. But if we consider about the aerial engine or the other some typical, some special application, density is really important in that case. For example, if we can decrease 10% of the weight, and also increase the per performance of the bearing steel. That will get a very big advantage there. And uh, aluminum, sufficient aluminum uh, addition will suppress the carbide pre precipitation in the temperature temperature. That means we can encourage the transit carbide pre precipitation at, that, at the very low, at the temperature temperature. So let's move to the actual experiment. This is the actual design alloy. This is the first alloy design for, the, for the, this target. There are 1.2 weight percent carbon. And the arson is almost uh, the same as the typical 5 to 100 bearing steels. Just the dif what's the difference is only the carbon and the aluminum. The combination is increased. Uh, combination of carbon and uh, aluminum. Here, we, we can see is the, the blue line should be the gamma, that means austenite. Here, we can see the, from the 
fish diagram, equilibrium fish diagram, we, 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 we can get some, still get, get some set. That means the, before the, you, you take to the reaction, we, we can get some, also get, get slightly same type precipitation according to the equilibrium phase, phase diagram here. Because here, that means outside will, from outside here, the, the same type will get uh, formed at, at the beginning. I did not check the, the I mean, carbon carbide. I'm not sure will carbon carbide form or not. Just at the beginning, I just consider about the same type here. So, and uh, by this idle design, we can consider about the density decrease. You know, if we, if we calculation for the density with the thermocal software, we need to consider about the, the lattice structure as well. If the, in the case of full BCC, that means in the fully martin site, uh, the density uh, is some different the density we get. If with the BCC plus set, because the same type is uh, uh, more density comparing with the, the same type, so we get the almost, the, if uh, by addition of five weight percent of aluminum, we get almost 8% of the density decrease. Oh, oops. The, uh, here is the original one, original, to original 5 to 100 bearing steel without aluminum addition. Uh, there, I made a mistake, sorry. <laughs> this one I can show you here. It's uh, you take to the point, it's almost at 0 0.5 weight percent of carbon in this case. If we actually get to, get five weight percent of aluminum addition in this annulus, we can move the you take to the point, almost 1.2, maybe slightly less, maybe 1.1 to 1.2. Anyway, we can move the you take to carbon concentration from 0 0.5 to almost 1.2 in this case. That's very huge difference of the carbon concentration there. In this case, it's uh, just a hard road microstructure. I, as as received hard rolling condition of the ex, of the steels, we get this kind of microstructure. You can see here, we never find that kind of networks of the pre, of the hyper same type precipitation. But I, I did not check the. You know, it's just the beginning of this research for the. You know, it's a adventure in the <laughs> bearing steel. <laughs> so it's just the beginning of the research. I did not check in the detail yet now. So I'm not sure is there a uh, copper carbide or just the same type inside. It's possible to form copper carbide as well in this case. So for check, the hardness and the phase transformation uh, of the, this annulate, we, we investigate the uh, heating cycle first, get the AC1 and the AC3 measurement. Uh, because of the heavy aluminum addition, we get some special, anyway, it's very complicated comparing with the conventional steels, you know. At the beginning, I guess here should be the just AC1. At the beginning of here is some here is some trouble from the machine, but it's I think it's here or we already see the clear phase transformation started here. This temperature and uh, it fully 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 get fully austenite at almost this temperature and this two some special point I. I think it is related to the carb, uh, carbon dissolution or something. Because according to the phase diagram previously, we, we, we said uh, almost all of the ferrite should be combined, associated with the 
carpet distribution will, will finish the first, and then we remain some carpet did not uh, dissolve. So the next stage for the phase transformation should uh, just associate with the carpet dissolution. This is for the heat treatment by the light meter for check the max structure ev evolution during the heating processing. After that, I, I need to emphasize the experiment is here. I keep the, all the specimens in the ice water for one hour. That's because of the, you know, the ambient temperature get changing in this time. So ma to make sure the mountain side fraction and the hardness, so I keep it in all of the specimen in the ice water. That means I'm sure it's just a zero degree centigrade, not the just a fluctuation for the ambient temperature. This is the experiment result for this kind of heat treatment. With the increase at the beginning of this temperature, 750, we did not get serious the mountain static transformation information here. And with increasing to the, the, the heat treatment temperature to 770s, we get the MS temperature around 100 or something. But after we increase, we get higher MS temperature, but anyway, it's less than <coughs> 150. So actually, we, well, this is not what we desire. I, we desire to get much more fraction of mountain site at this moment to increase the hardness. I hope to move the MS temperature at around this, this range. That means from almost nearby 200 centigrade or something. But uh, as you see, uh, as I said before, this is just the beginning of this adventure. <laughs> the microstructures show us at this temperature, we get only a few mountain side transformation here. And the basic microstructure is some uh, spherotized perlite, just like this, and some high carbon retin arsenide. The MS temperature should be lower, lower than zero centigrade, so did not get transformation. With the increase of the temperature, heat treatment temperature, we get the microstructure <coughs> change, gets uh, almost a f fully austenite, but also here, some of the fraction of uh, ferrite still there. So that means the, the carbon is, much, uh, is also some higher comparing with the fully austenite station. Oh, we, we can get the hardness, like this value, 780 or something. Uh, as I said, the problem is that this is the, the, the first experiment for the, the, the new annual system. At this moment, we just uh, keep it uh, isothermal holding at the Treat heat treatment temperature only for 10 minutes in the delight meter. That means after that I found maybe it's too short because of the, you know, the dilatation curve is still get the decrease the, de decrease the length of the specimen. That means that the phase transformation did not get uh, reach the equilibrium. So if we get the heat treatment temperature get it down to one hour, we can get uh, much higher MS temperatures in that case, almost to get 190 or something degree. And we, we can improve the hardness to 860 HV. That's uh, very high comparing with the conventional uh, bearing steel like uh, in, in, in this annual system. Uh, I, I will emphasize this. Uh, it's just a fresh, fresh uh, hardened without any precipitation hardening. Yes. This is a comparison with the conventional INOS uh, of the retinal fraction. It's almost uh, the similar situation. <laughs> Conclusions. The density reducing about 8% to due to the ad addition of five weight percent of aluminum addition in the, in the bearing steels. 
and uh, the net networks of carbide being avoided in the as road materials or into the enhanced to the carbon content by aluminization. And the hardness of chip is just uh, slightly being higher than one weight portion of uh, the carbon content bearing steel. But in, uh, as I said, uh, at the later on, later on experiment showed that the hardness is actually much higher. We, we achieved 860 HV. And uh, the admin suppressing the retention of outside, but uh, not sufficient in this isolated system at the, this experiment, experiment result. But the, the, the further experiment show us the much better. So, and the, you know, because it's uh, just the, at the beginning of this research, too much research for this will, will, will be checked to ensure this idea is right or not. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for that, and I think everyone was kind of astonished at some of the beautiful micrographs you showed as well. Um, I expect there are lots of questions. Yes, there's one already. Uh, thank you for a very nice presentation, and uh, I have a lot of questions about your very interesting uh, investigation. And the first question is, uh, no doubt that um, hardness is an extremely important property for bearings, for bearing steel. But uh, if you try to, res to improve your hardness, uh, at the same time you, uh, you can receive another problem, the problem of brittleness. Uh, and uh, how do you want to receive this problem? It is the first question. And the second is, uh, what is an optimal amount of retained austenite, in your opinion? I'm sorry, the second question? An optimal amount of retained austenite. Uh, actually, I did not check the return austenite fraction, but from the MS temperature, we, we, we can estimate the fraction of return austenite is like this, almost 20% or something. Uh, and uh, what is an optimal amount? 10% or 5% of austenite or 50, uh, okay. maybe, I don't know. Uh, I did not check the because it's just at the beginning. I'm, I'm not sure how how kind of what, what kind of uh, return that we can achieve. Okay. And for about the hardness at the beginning, you know, it's just at the beginning. We we, we just uh, focus on the hardness first, and then we are concerned about the other issue, for example, the brittleness or some. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. It's a very interesting topic. Uh, have you considered the production of the bearing steel quality steel with such a high aluminium level and low inclusion content? And another question is also related to the brittleness. What will be the ductile brittle transition temperature for this type of steel if you add such a high amount of aluminium? Thank you. Thank, thank you. And uh, about the chemical metallurgy processing, as a beginning, I think if we can get the very high performance and uh, low density bearing steel, firstly, we, 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 if we can get the very big advantage from the physical metallurgy view of the materials, I think the other guy will consider how to solve that problem. <laughs> but <laughs> it's just the beginning. And uh, for, for the Britain, so in, in my opinion, because of the aluminum addition, so uh, it's very easy to get the transit carbide precipitation, maybe get some advantages for the brittleness. Aluminium content, not, not related to the carbides at all. Okay, I did not consider it about. Thank you. All right, there's a question up at the back. So uh, just let us fancy that I were a steel making metallurgist, which I am not, of course. But uh, I have a few remarks about your possible development if everything succeeds. One point is that, as already you remarked, uh, you need an extreme uh, high cleanliness uh, for those steels. Uh, so if we accept just titanium like 30 ppm 
normally in burning steels. This is likely more, and aluminum and titanium in process metallurgy, you know, they are in a way uh, relative. The other one is very, very basic, but if we fancy to make a trial heat of uh, this steel about 100 tons, we will have liquid about 14 uh, cubic meters, uh, and if you add 5% uh, of aluminum, you will have a volume which is roughly 2 cubic meters, which is a huge volume when you... This is an adventure when I was a steelmaking steel man some time ago, and it was already an adventure just to put some carbon inside the steel because you have very big reaction. This is a, a lot, a lot of aluminum, so it is very interesting in principle, but I think uh, and suggest that you make some agreements with the guys that uh, go <laughs> producing this, so, and have a uh, work in a steel making plant, so you get the ideas uh, for what could be useful for uh, industrial work as well. But any case, a uh, very good and nice presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Harry, did you have a question? Yeah. Yes. Uh, so thank you, Hong Leng. That was yes. an excellent uh, lecture. Uh, I wouldn't worry too much about the steel making because there's a lot of research uh, currently in progress for the manufacture of low density steels yeah. that have even higher aluminum concentrations. And I also wouldn't worry too much about the toughness at this stage because there's nothing to indicate that this yes. would be worse than ordinary yes. bearing steels which really don't have much in the way of toughness. It's yes. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, only what, way what I would suggest <laughs> is you also try to produce bainite. Yeah, because... Oh, of course, you would, su <laughs> you would suggest you. that, wouldn't you? No, uh, the, the, oh, the serious topic. reason yes. for that is not yes. simply that I'm interested in Bainite. Yes. yes, yes. But you have a large aluminum concentration, yes. which Fast. has the same effect yes. as a large silicon concentration yes. in suppressing yes. uh, cementite during low temperature transformation. Yes. So you could same, actually yes. produce super Bainite yes. in this. Yes. Like yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Pedro, you had a question. I just one uh, yeah. comment uh, here. Um, um, when you increase to such levels the aluminium, uh, you would expect a decrease in the Young's modulus. And this could compromise the uh, uh, bearing dimensional stability, which is determined by the, when, you, when the two moduli are equivalent, then you may not have dimensional stability on the assembly. But when you have a, a gradient, then that would be a problem. So, have you measured the Young's modulus yet? Uh, not yet, but uh, I have some experience for the, the other low density anodes. Uh, it's a very hard topic for the automotive structure steels for the safety. I mean, firstly, for the high, very high admin addition, in that case, some people already reported if you increase the admin to 6 weight person, it get almost 20% of the decrease for the Young's modulus. Yeah. But uh, if we, they increase the admin more to 8 weight percent, it just uh, slightly decrease, 22 or something with a decrease for the young modulus. But in the delta chip, the admin is just uh, in, uh, to, from 3 to 5 or in this, this range. I checked the 4 weight percent of admin I did still. The young modulus did not get decreased too much. That means, in my opinion, how to get the young modulus decrease as, as much as that in the high aluminum. That means, in this case, uh, because in the full weight portion of aluminum addition, we did not get the decrease. That means the, 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 you know, the bond between iron and aluminum would not decrease the young modulus in this case. The problem is only just aluminum aluminum bond. If we keep the aluminum level as uh, some just four or five or some case. I, I think the just modulus is not a problem in this case. And we have one uh, question from... One last yes. question uh, from uh, Ian, Ian from Acelometer. Uh, the data that uh, aluminum increased the MS temperature by 30 degrees is actually uh, old data. Yes. Did you check uh, the MS temperature without aluminum? I did not check. And uh, also, it's uh, very complicated. We have to compare about the heat treatment. So I did not compare. But uh, yeah, yeah, yes, that is a very old date. So we did not get the absolute right result comparing with what, what we predicted with that equation. Yes. OK, thank you so much for that talk. Okay,